just so everybody's on the same page, this is going to be with the Ninja Storm panelists. Is that why everybody's here, Ninja Storm? That's right. And Zach here is going to be moderating. All right, guys, if my voice sounds familiar to you, I am Zach from the Ranger Command Power Hour. Uh, I am thrilled to be here at Power Morphicon, not only covering the show for the podcast, but also as one of the moderators handling the proceedings of the convention. And let me just say, Ninja Storm. Who, who out here is Ninja Storm's favorite season? Let me hear some noise. I will do my best to not ruin it for you. That's, that's all I can do. So, um, it is my great pleasure to announce the cast of Power Rangers, Ninja Storm. We have two of them up, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. This is going to be real intimate because I don't know where any of the others are. <laughs> Wouldn't we have thought like Dustin would be the one that was late, but instead it's Blake and the two trainers. So you know, there's a new, there's something new every time we come to PFC, isn't there? How's everyone doing? All right, man, you guys rock. I must admit, like I'm not sure how many of you heard my story yesterday about jet lag, but the energy you gave us yesterday. It was like I was running on con fumes all because of you guys, so I appreciate that and respect this is why we come out here. Yeah. 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 This is exciting. Spread it out like Benji Martin. The sound of your voice in these things. We wish we were keeping that last seat for a surprise visit from Sally or Jason, but... But we Alas, I must admit, we tried really hard to get them here, but hey, we did pretty well getting the five of us, and it's great to be here, getting the band back together. So I guess we'll just kind of kick things off with a real softball question. I mean, you guys were the first crew to be in New Zealand, to be, a, you know, and, and how big was that? Like, that's a huge thing for not only the franchise, but enough to have this this long-running series come to New Zealand. What was that like for you guys? You start. You start. You start. I'm gonna no, start. I'm, I'm, oh. I'm, just, I'm starting. <laughs> it's me. Oh, she's just in that stare. Um, We're all scared of her. And they just, whenever I say anything, they're like, no. Uh, I think for so Kat and I were in New Zealand, obviously. Um, and we've been working in, in, in the industry for quite some time. Long time. Um, on various shows. And so I think this was, I don't think we quite realised what we were walking into. It didn't play on Kiwi television. It was actually banned. Um, so all the kids were doing all the moves at school. And so some kid <laughs> broke his arm and they banned it. Um, so, um, so we didn't actually quite realise what the magnitude and what the whole franchise was about. So we kind of walked into it really blindly. Um, didn't we? Did well, you I, I watched um, Mighty Morphin Power just when I was little. Did you? <laughs> Me too. Yeah, I <laughs> come home from school. I love that. In New Zealand? <laughs> yeah. Before it was banned. Before it was banned. It was actually probably my fault it was banned. I was trying out some moves. <laughs> but it was, uh, yeah, so we didn't quite realise how uh, huge it was going to be, but that quickly became very, very, very apparent. And, um, yeah, just a wonderful opportunities for Kiwi actors and Kiwi crew to uh, join into this world. And then these other guys came from overseas. Not that far overseas, I mean, Australia. You were so close far overseas. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you just went. Yeah, it was went. sort of like a sister-brother connection. But I must admit, when, when we first got the roles, um, I knew what Power Rangers was. I was I was a massive Ninja Turtle fan as a kid, so Michelangelo all the way. But, um, I, I yeah, the be, yellow. Uh, yeah, the yellow. I must have been getting into it. I, I knew what we were coming into. And I have a twin brother, and we used to kick flip around the, the TV room with the pillows on the floor and do our martial arts. So for me, it was exciting. But what for us, for us, there was no social media. So to meet you guys at Power Wolfcon in 2018 was the first time I really felt 
the fandom and, and that's what makes this show. That's what really makes it. It's you guys out there. So now that I've finally met you and it was epic shooting it, but to, to feel feel the fans, that's that's the big sign for us. When you come back, when you come back. Always. <laughs> It was like 19, oh, 17 years later. Yeah. Um, for the rest of you, like, when was that moment for you? When did you realize, like, oh, this is so much bigger than I thought it was? For me, I, I was I was in Brazil um, in about 2015 or 16. I, I finished doing a show in Ad in Australia, and I was back in Brazil, and a, and a um, guy who I think a lot of people might know, sort of Adriano, he books a lot of the actors to go out to the Brazilians and nodding, going, yeah, Adriano. <laughs> um, he got in touch with me through social media and he's like, hey man, so I've just found out that you're in Brazil and you're Brazilian. He's like, do you know how massive the Power Rangers fandom is here? And I didn't really know. And he organised a few conventions for me around, um, around Brazil. And I went to some of these events and like, these guys will know, they are, they're massive, huge. Um, and in Brazil, you know, in Brazil there's a lot of poverty and there's a lot of, um, yeah, people who are sort of in, in situations that I don't, I don't see day to day. And um, I, first time I did one of these conventions and there were probably 5,000 people at one of these things. That's when for me it really hit that, you know, Power Rangers so many years on was still so important to a lot of people. And I had so many people, you know, Brazilians, coming up to me and saying, like, you have no idea how important Power Rangers was um, in my upbringing for a lot of people saying, you know, I was in a difficult situation or, you know, a, different, a difficult phase of my life and Power Rangers helped get me through that. You know, I think all of us, we've done work outside of Power Rangers, but when we hear things like that, not just as actors, but as human beings, you know, that's really meaningful for us to know that something that we've been part of has really had an impact on, on so many people. Absolutely. And it's really, it's great for us. I'm sure, you know, it's special for you guys to be here. It's very special for us too. Oh yeah, you guys rock. <laughs> we've got, we've got a day and a half left. This is awesome. Yeah. So, one of my questions would be, you know, you get your scripts, you're reading through, and you're looking through. How do you find that character? How do you take what's written on the page and say, okay, I know that this is how this person is supposed to act. This is how this person's mindset is. How do you kind of tap into that? Well, well for me, there was, a, there was a line that Blake says uh, when you first meet us in, in the Thunder Strangers, where he goes, he's dark and brooding. He's right, dark and brooding. That was, my, that was my note, dark and brooding, so I just went with that. <laughs> I think you start off a certain way um, because obviously you get a character breakdown and what they kind of decided that how you should play your character. But along the way, as you're working, I think it develops more. Like for Katrina and I, we kind of played off each other, and originally that we were just villains. But I think we added a lot of comedy to our villainess, um, and that was more just us working off each other and, and being that able was to add the. <laughs> Thank you. So yeah, so it really just kind of develops along the way, and then you really find the character, I think. Kat and I ended up uh, ad-libbing so much of what you saw was off the cuff, what was happening in the moment, and it was, it was panty-wetting stuff the whole time, right? We were not, not in the bad kind of way. Not, or not in a good way, whichever way you want to take that. But Power Rangers panel after dark. This is, this is after dark. Children. I didn't mean it. There were a lot of takes, I mean, so I think what she's trying to say. <laughs> Take the mic off me. Um, no, I, we just made stuff up on the fly. Is what I meant, and it was funny. We we were laughing. Okay, I went too far with the panties. Yeah. <laughs> I, I get it. I get it. Isn't that what we're here for? Though? I know. Yeah, I've heard it now. I've heard it, and I went too far with it. But yeah, uh -huh, I'm gonna put the mic down. And I think for Dustin as well, like like Katrina was saying, there's a lot of or, uh, Adam was saying, sorry, there's a lot of clues like um, dark and brooding. And for Dustin, you know, well if you know the Power Rangers were real, Dustin would be the the airhead comic book guy. 
and it's like, airhead comic book guy, cool dude, all right. And then you, you cue and you just roll with it. You slip into that so easily, by the way. That's yeah, he did. So <laughs> impressive. He slipped in there real easy. Yeah. Yeah. I would say dude for That accent is fake. That accent is fake. That's his real voice, by the way. <laughs> this is my real accent. I'm uh, from Brazil. The <laughs> thing is, he's not a doofus at all in real life, either. Uh, <laughs> so, like, speaking on then, you know, affecting these accents, how hard was it to make sure you stayed in the right accent? How often did you slip and, you know, say a word and be like, oh, that was the wrong Poor word? Poor constantly. It's all day. It's all day. We had a, we had an accent coach there. We had an accent coach there. Um, he was around for the first sort of month to make, to give us training. And then in the first sort of month of filming to make sure that, just pull us up whenever we slipped up. But, um, yeah. yeah, I think, you know, in Australia or in New Zealand, we grow up listening to a lot of American films. Yeah. And I grew up, I was really into Ben Folds, Ben Folds 5, and um, that's how I sort of portray my American accent. But we hear it all the time. Yeah, sure. I think it's, yeah, it's a lot easier for kids these days. I, and I was off the back of, I don't know, 40 episodes of Herc and Xena and Young Herc, so it's always a bit of Herc and Xena and Young Hercules. Also, I kiss Ryan Gosling to sell it. <laughs> I should go now, right? That's all I've got. Um, I actually really did. Sorry, guys. Yeah, so I, I went to drama school beforehand, but you know, getting into drama school, it was all American accents anyway, because that's where you're going to get your work. And, and I, so I have my, my accent down, you know, I have my American accent, I can slip into it anytime you want, you know, because it's, uh, it's, it's a staple of being an actor. If you're going to get a job, you're going to get an American accent, you know, more often than not. But yeah, no, from Australia, you know, we, did, we did classes, all sorts, on all sorts of different accents, but you always had to have your American accent at the ready. The, I think the first week we were shooting, it was pretty funny how it listened to the Aussies, the Kiwis, trying to pronounce power, 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 power. <laughs> but it would come out like power. 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 And ranger. So it was like the first year, like, yeah, power ranger. <laughs> it was pretty cute to hear that for the first week. <laughs> So, I mean, this is a staple question we get at every Ranger panel, and I also need to know, what were some of the best pranks you guys pulled on each other while you were filming? Pooh would, so, say, say the camera is there, and there was filming, Pooh would be off camera, to the right, flashing us his cute little butt cheeks, <laughs> trying to crack up anybody, and then he would run to the other side and do it again, and it would, <laughs> there'd be like a prop or something sticking out of the side, and then his butt would just slowly, <laughs> slowly come creeping out, and then his face would come out smiling. One of us would lose the tank, and, like, and they were using film, so you, know, you only get one or two of those. Yeah, we were filming on film. And there was this thing called uh, slap. The Kiwis, if you, if you made noise, if you put something, if you, if you put a case of beer. Movie, if you laughed, if you blew a take, you'd be like, slap, which would mean you have to buy a slab of beer for the crew. The end of the weekend. It does get expensive, and, and, and when, when, when you figure that out, you start actually blowing shots for people, trying to. Yeah. Because you know, hey, the beer fund's gonna be full come Friday. Right? I'm not sure if you guys know this game though, as well, where you put that and you've got to get it below your knee, and if someone looks at it, you got to punch them in the arm. Well, the lighting guys used to go, hey Adam, Adam, how's your mark? And they'd be doing this down there, and I'd look down and go, <laughs> bam! So they do that, but some of the funniest ones were the stunt doubles. Because there wasn't a lot of, you know, they're obviously all Japanese, the majority of them that did the amazing stunts. They couldn't speak a lot of English, so they'd be just sight gags. I mean, there was one time when we were talking to him and he just upended himself into a sumo bin. He just jumped straight up and died straight into a sumo bin while we were sitting there having a conversation. I was just like, what was that? Oh man, that's great. Um, let's go to the next question. So gosh, I'm trying to think of other questions that would be great for you guys to answer that are unique. Um, okay, let's talk um, crossover. Yep. Because I, one of my favorite crossovers of all time, the Thunderstorm yeah. crossover. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so, <laughs> talk about the Thunderstorm crossover. Okay, that's a moment that, that really, that was like my fan kid, like my, my moment. So back on that camera thing, when we were using film, we have a, and his marks, and he was talking about the marks on the ground. Simple shot. All the whole team, we all have to run up to the line, right? Run up and do it. We have our marks. Ready to go. 
and action. We all run out. JDF is right here, right where Adam is. Up over my shoulder. So when I come, I come running up. I do the steps. <laughs> Uh, okay, we'll try that again. Jorge, uh, eye straight, please. Uh, <laughs> looks Stop like you're trolling, looking at yeah, yeah, Jason. Uh, all right, action. <laughs> I couldn't have, I, I think it was like two, three tags. Finally, they're like, Jorge, stop looking. Just look straight. Good. That was the moment, I think. Actually, I remember shooting that scene as well. There's a bit where we were all running together, so Jorge and I are running with JDF. Glenn, you're running with, um, uh, probably by myself. <laughs> but, but you can see we're all trying to race each other. Yeah. Everyone was trying to run as fast as you could, but keep it all in frame. And uh, we were running with him, and, and you could tell each one was trying to try and run as fast as they could. And you're not supposed to do that when you're filming. You're not supposed to do the film run. But we were all like, oh, yeah, I can run faster than you. <laughs> but that was cool. I mean, like, to shoot that and to come back and, and meet those guys, and they had such a great series as well. Um, with what they did with Dino Thunder. So to come back and, and do reunion episodes, it was, it was exciting stuff to work with, with him as well and, and, and the rest of the crew that did such a great job with that series. I mean, I have memories of sitting in Eating Lucky Charms, watching him, right? Just like all of you, like a being a fan. So like, be able to be part of it years later, you know, it's amazing. But I remember with the crossover as well, because like I said, we were the first season shooting in New Zealand and like, we really felt like well, that was our thing, like with a, this is our show, and then when we did the crossover, and like there were these new kids on the block, and I was like, "Get out of here, you bastards!" I wasn't new. I was still no, no, here. With the new Raiders, with the Dino Thunder Raiders, and I was like, "You bastards, get out of here!" Like this is our turn. It was, it was easy to channel that into your, your evil brain. Oh, into the, the hatred was real. <laughs> Must admit, I was talking to um, Jack Guzman last night, um, and you know the fact that we didn't get to do the Wild Force crossover as well. And you know, I was saying we would have been together, man. We would have been fighting together, and you know that that was that was missing. I mean, I would have loved to. Have, I did like the Wild Force uh, series itself, so that would have been a nice crossover. But we got we got the die from the whatever. So that speaking of the hatred for the new kids on the block, which is more fun, playing good or playing bad? Bad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bad. It's, yeah, bad. It's, yeah, the baddies are the bestest. Like, how come, how come, Sorry. How, no, no, I agree. Like growing up, in, in, and still, like in films and in shows that I watch, I always love. I love a good baddie. Like I love. I love. Um, as an actor, Michael Wincott, who was the baddie in The Crow, and he just got this awesome voice. Um, you know, Dustin Hoffman in, as Hook. You know, like um, uh, Ray Fine as as Voldemort and Harry Potter, you know, you can do such great stuff with a good baddie. Um, so, and we all got a, a shot at doing it, because the girls were obviously the baddies, and then we had our, our baddie moments. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I want to ask a question though of you guys. Why is it always that when we're evil rangers, we're heaps strong, and then when we become good, we're weak again? What the <laughs> Right, so it's, it's a level up thing, is it? Like, you know, well, they got they got stronger as a team, now we got to level up the bosses. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys also have to film a lot of helmetless scenes and be in the suits a lot. How did that, like, I can only imagine how body-fitting spandex feels. I would never ever wear it myself, for obvious reasons. But what was that experience like getting to actually suit up and have the helmet or, you know, have it open, so everyone's like, oh, these are actually the actors in the suits, these aren't the stunt guys this time. Well, I remember wardrobe uh, people brought the clothes in and put it on, and you actually have a moment where you, you know, you slide the gloves on, <laughs> and put it on, and each layer. For me, the ninja form was, because it was just so yeah, well ninja made. suits. Yeah, the ninja, ninja suits were business. But when you put on the helmet, though, that's, like, you almost physically start buzzing. The first time you do it, you actually, you know, I did take a photo. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's like I. <laughs> we did take a group photo too, but nobody knows. It's the first time we're in the suit, so nobody knows how to stand. So like one of us is like, this. <laughs> 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 is this right? <laughs> you can 
can't tell. Nobody knows what they're doing. I hope you've seen the photo of his in the background, Glenn. As soon as he got into his stern dates, he was jumping all over the place, doing like head high kicks, and uh, he was he was loving it. I mean, that's four layers of spandex or whatever it was in there, and some of the days it was pretty warm. I was just jumping around a lot because I was trying to get my rid of my wedge. In my <laughs> the first layer of that spandex. Oh, yeah, we had to, I'd have to draw you a diagram for you to understand properly, but it's not comfortable. We had, we had to wear a thong under that as well, so what do you guys call it, G-string or that? Yeah, it's, uh, and you've got it's to like use lots of olive oil to get into it, a <laughs> shoehorn in a spatula to try to get out. It's, it's Is it a shoehorn? <laughs> and then, you know, the ladies, you had unique costumes too. I mean, your headpiece oh, was like a Oh my god, my was horrendous. Like, I had to wear that for hours and hours. It was so heavy. I got a migraine, like, every single day. But they wouldn't let me take it off. She just got to wear like no, mine was yeah. he mine was heavy. Yours looked like roadkill. It looked mine like costume. I kind of looked like Mickey Mouse on acid or something. <laughs> but you know the, the like you know we all had our outfits. But the real credit and the hardest job went to the Japanese stunties. Those guys were phenomenal wearing the big monster outfits and doing what they do in them. Like those guys. One day, do you guys remember when? Um, uh, uh, Matoko? Bro no, someone broke their foot. Uh, yeah, she, she, she did a backflip and she had five inch heels. Like, heels were not even five. Like, I remember we did it and she did it. We had the mat and her heels were this high, Roto. And we could see when she landed on the mat, it broke a bit. And then, because we worked so fast, we just pulled the mat away and then shoot. And I remember looking at the way her foot landed and I went, and I said it, I said it, I go, her ankle's gonna roll. And, hit and, it broke. and I felt so bad that most of the I said it so loud that it was like, you know what, you feel like you wailed it. So she couldn't do any more of the stunts, and then, uh, or be in the costume of Sally's costume. So, yeah, and then Hiroshi took over. Yeah, and yeah. Kazu was about to be. His, yeah. his stunt up took yeah. over, and he's in the. Yeah. 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 So if you notice, I don't know what episode it would be around, but like, Sal, you know, Tori in Ranger form was Matoko, like, you know, like, small, slim, little Japanese woman, and then, like, halfway through the episode, it would be short, stocky, strong, little, uh, uh, Hiroshi. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, they were breaking bones. I remember times we would do a, we would do a sequence, and you get so into the character, or you get so excited, there'll be multiple hits, that afterwards, you come back and you're like, did, did I hit you? I hit you, didn't I? Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, oh, no, it's okay. <laughs> it was like hard kicks and hard hits. They were really taking punches. I remember one time actually Paul uh, dislocated well, the funniest uh, van ride back ever because he dislocated his shoulder halfway through a through a fight scene and and he was on the green whistle on the way back and um, just some of the stuff he was saying is like his arm was out of place but he's going hey guys look at me I'm the crazy man in the van <laughs> but they actually got it on camera when it when it dislocated it actually shot itself and, um, but he'd had problems with his with his. Shoulder, yeah. I remember even morphing once towards the end of the shoot. He went, okay, morph. Ninja took all three of our shoulders. <laughs> Someone had to come in, put his shoulder back in. Poor dude. So it sounds like you guys had a pretty good camaraderie with the stunt team. Um, the question I would pick back on that is, when did it start to feel like the camaraderie between you all really was, that's when everything clicked? I don't like these guys, so... Uh, <laughs> well, that's I'm waiting awesome. for that to come. Um, no, this thing is uh, my spirit animal, so, so we clicked within about 12 Two seconds, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so that was it. What is that spirit animal? Like? But I, I don't know, it's... I'm uh, interested. Yeah. What, what would your animal be? My animal? Yeah. Oh, a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> She's my spirit monkey. Um, so we clicked, like, super quick, but I, I, you guys were all hanging out in Metropolis. Yeah, I think we all lived. We were all roomies at one yeah. point or the other. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, the funny thing is, like, Jason Chan and I, we did three years of drama school before we even got the roles on Power Rangers. So we were basically in each other's pockets for three years um, <laughs> studying acting. And then Glenn I knew from Adelaide, so that's our hometown in Australia. I'd actually been to his sister's uh, New Year's Eve party the year before we got cast in the actual show. I met his mom and his dad and everything before I even met him. I saw him in a play that he did at the end of school. So Adelaide is like really small town south of uh, Sydney in Australia 
And so we knew each other before we even got the roles as well. We knew of each other. Um, everyone was telling me how great he was. And, um, and then I knew Jason, but then Jorge and I got to hang out for three weeks before we started shooting. So we were drinking and having a good time before waters. we even started shooting. Waters. Water, 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 water. Cups of tea. Water, uh, yeah. Green we tea. It's really good. For the... But no, we, we, he and I connected like that. So you can see it translate on... Uh, oh, well, this is me saying it. Oh, I can't speak for him, but... Um... <laughs> oh, Barry. We all did, you know, we, we had a really good camaraderie, we had heaps of fun, most of us were, well, some of us came from out of town, so um, we're, when you're out of town and you're all sort of thrown into that um, environment together, you just you just gel, you become family and we worked long hours, you know, we were like 4.30, 5am till 6pm and then most of us lived in the same hotel, so yeah, you become, you become like family. And it also wasn't just the cast members, we got on really well with the crew as well. Yeah, the so crew we were, were awesome. We were all yeah. So most of the crews were also at the time that we were all shooting Lord of the Rings, so we had lots of good things to talk about on set. Uh, at, one, at one point, the guy that was doing my stunts, the Kiwi guy, was doing all Legolas' stunts as well, so I was asking him all stuff. He was doing all the running over the, the mountains and stuff, so all day I was just brain on what was going on with all that sort of stuff so but the crews were incredible so you can actually see it in the way that we shot the way ours is shot is quite different it's a little bit more gritty and a little bit more film like and and that's why i enjoyed watching the the, the the series afterwards and seeing how how well the crews came together and, and they were all amazing i mean the games like i said that they played with the lighting guys it was all over everyone just got along just so well so yeah it was just a fun time really good time so another really cool thing about you know filming in New Zealand is man the scenery is just so beautiful in that season. You see these sweeping hills, these beachside. Um, was there a favorite location? Yeah, I got one. I got one straight up because Jorge and I did it. I'm not sure if you remember the the fantasy episode where we go to visit Grandma. Yeah. Yeah, and there are trees there, right? And they, and, and they were. They were growing, these branches were growing in perfect loops. And I've gone, these trees have to have been placed by you guys, but they weren't, because they had their own magnetic field. And, and obviously uh, New Zealand is, a lot of it's largely um, uh, made by magma, so it's all got a magnetic field to it. So these, these trees would grow, the branches would grow in loops, but they were this, this thick, in perfect loops. And there was a full forest of them. And we're down there just filming in this fantasy scene, and I was going, this is crazy, you know? Some of the places we saw were absolutely incredible. The beaches like Piha, where um, the piano was filmed. So yeah, Piha, that, that beach we had we had to do a stunt coordinator. And I told the story earlier, but where they wanted to see how well we brought, could ride the motorcycles. So he, he draws a line in the sand. He's like, okay, I want you to do a figure eight and come back and stop right here on the line and see how you break. I'm like, okay, bang, start it up. Or how he goes off into the distance. Yeah, something took me over. Like New Zealand is a very spiritual place, so I mean, if you're by the water, it takes you over. Yeah, and I don't know, it came over me, but all of a sudden my hand just wouldn't stop revving, and I just took off, and I, I met my speed matched. Yeah, that's literally what he was doing. He was going, matched, "Where's all hang on?" I matched the speed of the waves to the point where it was like it was just like this perfect kind of movement. I realized that like screaming, like like. Salt water's crying out of my eyes, and I'm like, ah! <laughs> Finally, I come back. He's like, he's just so mad. Don't you ever do that again? <laughs> but I know why you did it. <laughs> <laughs> I remember another moment. We had a piha. We, we were shooting at piha beach, and then there was these like two guys surfing, and they sort of started walking up. And then I was looking, and I was like, man, that looks like Ben Harper. And then we're like, yeah, man, that's Ben Harper. And then he came up, and he's like. Oh, you guys are filming Power Rangers. And we're like, whoa, you're Ben Harper. He's like, oh, is this Power Rangers? Ben Harper. Yeah, we had this moment. But do you remember? Ben had just come out of Jack the water. Jack Johnson as well. Jack Johnson. Jack Johnson. One of them throws, like, I think it was Ben. He grabs his board and throws it on the ground. And we're all sitting there like, Ben Harper is mad. Like, he didn't seem like the type of thing to lose it. And there he was. Like, oh, I can't get away. All right, so let's talk some bases. The ninjas had a really cool dojo base. The villains had a really interesting spaceship base. Um, what were some of your favorite, maybe hidden parts of your bases that maybe the cameras didn't get to pick up? Oh, I think um, that, that Ninja Ops was cool as. Uh, 
obviously we never saw the waterfall because that was all uh, sort of CGI'd afterwards, but uh, just coming in and, and doing, we, we congregate in there and that's where we'd be sitting for 10 hours a day and, and we just look around at what they created with those, with that ninja ops and, and I'm not sure if you see much of the doors, they used to slide up and stuff, people would be pulling in them and they'd slide up and that's where we'd go in. I'm not sure if you saw us walking the Zords much. I mean, there was one moment where you see Jason walking to the Dragon Zord and that was the only time you could really see the actual panel come up. But what about, yeah. what about into the Zord B? Zord B! <laughs> that's how cool you used to say, oh, the Zord B, bro! <laughs> that was a lot of fun to be in. Like, you know, those shots that would have us in the, in the Zord, like we're driving it, I think my first shot for me, that was really exciting, climbing in, because I knew I was going to be in that shot. In our cities. Yeah, yeah, you're like you know, hitting buttons and touching stuff. And like, you got to kind of move like you're moving around. And it feels silly at first, but it's like you're in the Zord. Storm Charges was pretty cool as well, you know, with all the X game stuff. And, um, yeah, I think that for us, we had a really good sort of um, side story with the with the X Games side of things, and the motocross, and the surfing, and the skateboarding. Yeah. And what, what about Loth was it Lothor's chair? Lothor's oh, yeah, chair? Oh yeah, yeah, the chair. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, we, we got to go in there a lot. Yeah. 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 What about you girls? Did you girls have a little space anywhere? Yeah. In Lothor's, what, what did you say? What did you say? There was no secret dodgy spaces, no. <laughs> no. We got to see all the spaces. Was no, just the chair was the coolest. The throne, the chair right? was the only thing in the room. Yeah, it was really, it wasn't really a lot. We were in space. It wasn't a lot there. So, here's an interesting one. I know a lot of fans like to ask at, at panels like these. Um, if you could have the power of any other ranger, what power do you think you would like to have? Um, I like Sally's uh, walking on water. Yeah, I kind of like water. water. Yeah. I, I would, I what would about the most serious? But I wonder, like, water and thunder, right? Is this, isn't there something wrong with that kind yeah, of thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? I don't know, like, it Although probably wouldn't turn out too well. Electricity and water don't mix up Yeah, yeah, like, somebody should have got shut. Yeah. <laughs> at one point, right? Like, yeah. yeah. You would think, like, maybe it was that the chemistry between That maybe, perhaps. I, I think, as a villain, I don't even want to answer that question. I don't want any Power Rangers stupid powers. Oh. <laughs> That's yes. fine words. It's going to be an MMA um, cage fight between Capri and the Thunder Rangers out back. Um, I don't know, like, um, I, I, I really loved how we had a, a ninja streak, so... Um, I, I think uh, I think the time force they, they had the power to sort of reverse time and stuff like that. I, I wouldn't mind uh, a little bit of that. I, I think at one point, um, what, am I right? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to think of some of the some of the cool uh, other powers, but yeah, look, I, I must admit, I did love our little ninja streak. Is there any any fans that have any questions? We got one down here. What was the favourite scene to film? Well, I've um, had this question quite a lot, and um, look, uh, my favourite scene was a scene that Pura and I um, got to film down on the beach early morning. It's the start of Boxing Bopperoo, where we're in our cities and we're doing a plain clothes fight in our ninja suits, barefoot on the beach. You know, we rocked up at six o'clock in the morning, the two of us, we, we choreographed it with stunt doubles, and then we got to work and, and we shot it, and, you know, we had a, a beautiful morning down there. It was just a beautiful, secluded part of the beach in the ninja suits, which whenever I got into the ninja suit, I'm like, you can leave me in this all day and I'll, I'll have a good time. It sounds very romantic. Doesn't it sound romantic? It's secluded and it's romantic. We're in a tight suit. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that was awesome. You know, like the, was it? Oh, well, you know, that was that, that little fire scene. But a lot of, a lot of like the scene that I did, the first morph with uh, Jorge, that, that, that was pretty pretty inspiring and memorable. For me it was, since I was a kid and I used to love the film Hook, as I've already mentioned it, um, but the food fight scene in Hook, like with Rufio, yeah. where they're imagining the food, I was like, man, how great would a food fight be? And so I can't remember the name of the episode, but someone here may know, but the, where we've got the food fight. I love Lothor. Yeah. Was, yeah. was that right? Yeah. Woohoo! And we had one take, you know, so that all the, the art department of the, you know, they were like, okay, Guys, so there's all this stuff, you've got one take, you just go go nuts. Don't hit the camera with any food, but the, the rest is on. 
And it was just so much fun. Yeah. Just having yeah, I ended up with a food fight. I ended up with a bowl on my head full of whipped cream. It was best you actually in this video, you're going, yeah. Yeah, I, I think everybody was preloaded. If you kind of look at the shot a couple seconds before, people are already winding up. <laughs> and, and they're targeting certain people, you can tell. Like, uh, and it's fun because at the end of it, you don't have to clean up. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Adam, Adam improvised a really great uh, moment where he's just kind of extremely like he's dying in there. Oh, that's so right. Fun. That's after he puts this big uh, you know, bowl of whipped cream all over my head. But no, that was that was that was great to see. So I think we're going to start opening up uh, fan questions. If you guys want to come form a line this away for our lovely, lovely panel, uh, please do remember to keep these questions on topic about the show, the cast. Please keep our questions in good taste. Thank you very much. Make it easy on me if you could. I appreciate it. All right. So here we go. First fan question. Hello there, my name is Lucas Hahn. Um, I'm a huge fan of Power Rangers. You're a legend, Lucas. It's nice to see you guys. So, um, it was a great honor to be here, and um, I think this is my uh, my second time to be here in Pasadena, and I've been there like probably like two or three times, so it was really great. So, um, so Glenn, you've been to the movie called uh, Hook, right? So, what's it about? Like, what was it like when you used to work with um, uh, Robin Williams, who played uh, Peter Pan in the movie Hook. Me? Yeah. I wasn't even Hook. He's just a big He just loves Hook. What happens when he mentions so I wish, times. I wish. Yo, I agree. I see. So, oh, um, like, you used to do the, the dirt biking with, uh, with Adam and Dorito in uh, Ninja Storm, right? Yeah. So cool. Cool. Um, but when you do the, um, the dirt biking, was it more doing, like, outdoors? Or you do it on the on the green screen. Um, with some of these questions, we have to be careful how much of the dream we yeah, we, we blow, we shatter. <laughs> because those no are the truth of it. Ourselves. We'll give you the, the, the truth. The truth. The truth was um, we they did some training with us, like on the beach, like Jorge was saying. But um, through the filming, we actually couldn't write. It wasn't us riding the motorbikes. It's too dangerous. Uh, for us to go and break our leg and not be able to film for six weeks, so any t they, I don't think they even let us sit on the motorbikes with the engine running. Now nah, the engines were off, but we made out we were going, <laughs> <laughs> and we're just doing these ones in the back of the trailer. <laughs> All right, awesome. All right, let's go on our next thing. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank Thanks, Lucas. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. All right, I know it's a bit weird taking orders from a guinea pig, <laughs> but. If you could choose another animal to have been led by, which one would you choose? <laughs> a salamander. <laughs> now, do you know what's funny about that, that you say that? Because, you know, the guinea pig was obviously never on set, because he was a diva. Um, it was just like a little box, a straw box, like a box made of straws. I'll get it out, I'll get it out. And, and we had to look at it. And the, in that scene that I was telling you, that fire scene, where, where he flips off and kicks us both in the chest and, and to separate us. Yeah, that was fun because he's going, all right, he's kicking you in the chest now, now he's kicking you in the chest. And we're like, oh. But he wasn't really on set that day, so. <laughs> it was fun, it was fun acting towards him, but uh, now for me, if it was anything, um, I think maybe a koala bear. Obviously, it's an obvious one, Adam. I'd go for a small. <laughs> Sloth. Where do we have to go? Hi. <laughs> Who? Uh, maybe like a raccoon or something. <laughs> just like, it'd just be weird. Not that a guinea pig's not weird. It's yeah, yeah, weird. No. It's a rodent. Legend. Alright, next question. Hey, beautiful. Hello. How are you? Uh, I'm doing good. Um, for the ladies, um, I have a question. So it would be if you could choose uh, a villain, specifically the lady villain from Power Rangers, their outfit, what outfit would you choose? 
um, is it? Ooh, interesting. Uh, yeah. I'm not going to choose yours. No one's going to pick mine. <laughs> I don't want that. There's a, absolutely I would pick yours. yours. I really like your pink like hair. Yeah. yeah. Not so sure about the spandex, but I like the pink yeah, hair. Spandex was pretty. Um, now pick me. I'm not, I don't want to pick you because of what you were wearing on your head. It was gross. I know. <laughs> so when you guys did like the 60s television. Oh, that was a cool outfit. Yeah. 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 I love that outfit. Astronomer. But another good. another character. Yeah. Astronomer had a cool outfit. Who does Amy play? Amy. Yeah. Drakina. She's cool, but she's a goddamn smoking hot fox. So she's. Um, so that's why you want to pick that. Maybe. <laughs> That'll be it. Thank you. All right. Next up. All right. Uh, so when the Rangers are like battered and bruised, nothing's going right. There's no hope. Everything is lost. I know it takes a lot, you know, within an actor, actress to like bring that emotion out. Is there something that you guys like think of to like get to that place? Like maybe a relative or what a great, what a great question. And you know, like as actors, I mean, that's sort of what we do with any script that comes our way. You know, it's all about how you find it. And for me, you know, I use something called practical aesthetics, which is uh, you think of a time where, say, you're exhausted or you're upset, and you remember how that made you feel, and you try and recreate that. I mean, as an actor, I mean, you've already sort of got that in you. I mean, we go into acting because we're a pretty emotional bunch, you know, so, so it comes and flows through fairly well. Some of us, anyway. And um, so for me, practical sense, which is, you know, just recreating a feeling that you remember as, as a, uh, that you've been through that, that would sort of get you in that right area. And you try and think about it a bit. Maybe listen to a piece of music that upsets you or... or or exhaust you, like Killing in the Name of by Rage Against the Machine. I go, oh god, all right, I'll be battling all day, I'm done. But yeah, that sort of stuff for me anyway. I'll take 50% life experience and 25% somebody I know, and then another 25% just to begin. <laughs> See what comes. I took my general exhaustion from filming on set and waking up at four in the morning and went with that. Where I really had to draw a lot of energy from uh, was when we had to be upbeat. That's what it is. <laughs> Let's get on with it again. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Actually, you know what's something funny is when my first ADR, I'm coming in after Glenn, and he's like, he's doing the whole thing that uh, Hugh Jackman was doing as the Wolverine, so he's taking his jacket off, and he's in there going, <laughs> you know, so we're watching the screen, and we're watching the fight scenes, and we're trying to do the noises. So he's actually in there doing that, and I'm watching him going, I can do that. I can do that. <laughs> That was sort of how he got there, you know. He's literally doing the kick flips and stuff. They're doing on the screen while he's filming the, uh, while he's recording the ADR, which is the audio dub we do afterwards. So that's another thing we got to do. Is, you know, you got to you got to get that sort of feel whilst you're in a, a studio on something where these stunt doubles are doing these incredible stunts. So yeah, that was quite fun, and to get that energy is another sort of same to your question. You know. Thank you. Thanks so much. All right, next. Hi guys. What's up, Anthony? Uh, first of all, uh, thank you for keeping Ninja School after all these years. Hey. I really appreciate that. <laughs> so, uh, aside from crossovers, what would you say was your favorite episode to film and why? In crossovers? You no, aside. 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 Um, well, for me, for me, it was probably our first, when Jorge and I first, no, actually, when we, when we kidnapped Sensei, and we're walking through that, uh, and we fight the ghosts in the, in that forest before going to the, Cave where the Gem of Souls is. Um, that's that 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 scene there where we're fighting those those ghosts. That was that was pretty awesome um, episode to, to film where we're the bad guys on the run with their sensei. You know that was that was good. Mine would be tricking this guy into believing oh, yeah. that. <laughs> that <laughs> I think that was I think that's pretty good. And I also got to be a Power Ranger for a, a moment in time. She really cut to the core of me, didn't she? <laughs> She's to If it's any consultation, like, we, we for full to play. Right? Right? That was really good. <laughs> Anyone else? Uh, I, for me, I guess it would be the popcorn episode. <laughs> Just, and you know, also because it, it allowed the stunt team to kind of really let loose and unwind. Because they all dressed up as, like, 70s kung fu, uh, like, movie stars. And they were like in their element, I think, because they were very professional 
all the time, but that one day of filming, I just remember ever. It was like a, it was like different. It was kind of like, we were out there doing it, watching it. It was everything they loved, but it wasn't. It still was part of Power Rangers, but it was this other. Yeah, I'm not sure if you guys know, but in that, that that we actually the films we were watching, they created from scratch. All the stunt doubles created those kung fu movies we were watching. So one of them, uh, which was Jason Chan's stunt double, dressed up as. Bruce Lee and you know he was he was they created those from scratch it was incredible to watch all right thank you so much Legend. all right next up we have a family uh, this, this is a PAM and an MAP make a puppy <laughs> oh, a puppy on set and it, it's so good <laughs> hands on you it's a great episode oh. Well, here's, here's, my, here's my, my question for the actress who, who played Mara. What was it, what was it like being, playing two different characters? One, one, one on Ninja Storm and one on Dino Thunder? Oh, that was a lot of fun because obviously on uh, Ninja Storm I was a bad guy. And then on when I was Cassidy Cornell, then I was good. So it was nice that I got to play both. And then it was nice doing a bit of a crossover when I, when I was playing both characters walking past each other and saying, oh, I'm so much prettier. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had a lot of fun on both sides. Thank you so much for your question. <laughs> all right, my question is mainly for the guys, but girls, if you want to chime in, please, by all means, do. If you guys could leave the ultimate Power Ranger team, and I'm, let me just make sure, and you can choose any Ranger from any show, what would your team be? Okay, so I got asked this last night at the VIP party, so let's hope uh, my jet lag's gone now, and that was you, wasn't it? Yeah. So I, I'll go first, so uh, I'll start off with um, Hector Jr., uh, Green Samurai, he, he, he'll be uh, a, a buddy on there, Justin Nemo, Chris Kamen Lee, Jason Spawn, and, uh, no, 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 I, I, I can get away from these guys, can't I? I can choose other people from other series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and do I need one more, or is that, is that, is it four? Uh, and on the fifth, we need six ranger. Six ranger uh, will be, oh gosh, what did I say last night? Oh, wait, oh, why don't you have any girls? Yeah. Yeah, wow. That was it, pink, pink ranger. Just sure. as well. Thank you so much. Hi guys! It's great. Hey, how you doing, buddy? It's great to see you. You, you guys rocked. Yeah, you rock. Um, my question is for for uh, for my question is, uh, uh, tell us about your casting process. So uh, going going through the show, I'm uh, reading your characters and and then and going through the casting process. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember when when I went in, uh, uh, you know, it was all more about the American accent. I, I remember doing a, a roundhouse jump, roundhouse kick, but. After that, I left, and then the guy that was reading, so you have a reader when you're in there, and it was at Fox Studios, and he's called me up and he's gone, I'm sorry, buddy, to let you know, I let him know that you do impersonations. So they asked me to come back, and I had to do my Ace Ventura impersonation and my Christopher Walken impersonation. And, uh, and then I think they made, uh, Poor said that he had to do The Rock or something like that, so, you know, uh, that, that, they made us do a couple of impersonations after we did the scenes. Casting-wise, I actually auditioned for uh, Sally's part. I auditioned for the for the Blue Ranger. But you didn't get it. But did I didn't get it. After <laughs> <laughs> that was his comeback for me being mean to him on the show. Um, but yeah, they thought I, apparently I was pretty funny, and so they thought that they should put me in the role of Mara. I wasn't good enough to be a Ranger. But well, hold on, did, didn't she not get more episodes though? Yeah, it's true, it's true. Come back. No, it was Caddy. But, but apparently, as Caddy, apparently Sally's tape was the very first audition tape they put into the monitor. Like, of all the thousands of auditions, Sally's tape was number one. Bob, and they're like, good yep, start. See, be. if I had been first, then I would have got yeah. it. Oh, jeez. Awesome, well, thank you so much. What do we want to hear? What your casting process like? was? Well, I wasn't asked to play Sally. Um, I wouldn't be great at that. Uh, no, I was uh, one audition and then called into recall with this thing. And um, we did that scene. There are no penguins in the Arctic Circle. Yes, that's right. Did we actually end up doing that later on? 
We, yeah, it was in the show. Oh, was it? Yeah. <laughs> and Clara, you this have is no why idea I wasn't what was like working with her. <laughs> Honestly. Um, so, yeah, we, that was in front of Doug and um, the producers who'd come down, and I think they they just really liked us because we're really likable. That's a moment. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for Thank your question. Thank you very much. Right. Next up. Uh, this one's for Kat D and Glenn. Uh, do Dustin and Mara end up together? On the show or outside of the show? <laughs> Dustin's now married with a kid. <laughs> what do you reckon? Do you reckon Dustin and Mara ended up together? Obviously. Uh, well, they, they've made the... Didn't they do like a follow-up, um, like futuristic thing you know, of Dustin's... No, no, it's a prequel. Um, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> we'll leave it up to you guys to decide. What do you reckon? Yeah. 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 All right, next up. Hey, uh, I wanted to know if you guys kept any of the props or costumes from the show, and if you didn't, which one you wish you took? Oh God, yeah, I tried to. I tried to take a helmet, and they came into my trailer and they said, where is it? <laughs> I said, what do you mean? I said, where is it? I said, come on, you got seven of them in there. <laughs> now they took them back and I didn't get, I didn't get anything. But unfortunately, you know, unfortunately, we left like straight afterwards. But I think some people did pick up. I think Jason picked up some stuff, maybe. Jason Chan, yeah. Did but he? I thought we weren't allowed to. Jason did that. He's in trouble because we weren't allowed. Yeah, no, we weren't allowed to. Which one of you took stuff? I took stuff. Because you had the hat with you, and I was like, why don't I have mine? I took some stuff. Well, I did try to take a helmet, but then they took it back off. Me. <laughs> I wish I'd kept my sword. That would have been great. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Thanks, man. Thank you so much. All right, I think we have time for another question. Eric, what's up, man? Hello, I just want to thank all of you for being amazing and nice and enjoying all of you guys. I really enjoy meeting you. My question is for Adam and Jorge. You guys are both red and blue. There was already red and blue, but you guys wish it had been a different color to have more diversity in colors. Mmm. I, I would like to pull. Maybe it's silver? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I actually said a while ago, chrome would be great. Chrome, yeah. Cool. yeah. But like, but full on shiny, you know, like. like. But not, not a color, but also like, I'm, I'm really loving this death, like Death Ranger, like the small, like new. The new, the new Rangers that they're made. Actually, I meant the Inferno Ranger as well. I'm not sure if anyone's made him, but it's sort of amalgamation of us. And uh, yeah, yeah, like a, a Black Ranger would be good too. All right, well, it is just about that time, and I know that it's kind of a tradition on one of these big team panels that uh, I know everyone wants to see you guys do your morphs. Yeah. Yeah. All right, all right. This is not going to go well. <laughs> so, yeah, let's go. Those muscle memory reflexes are. All right, we're going to slow this one down the hall. The cat and I will stand up there and just watch. We're going to look really pretty on the side. All right, everyone, get your cameras out. Uh, wherever you want to do it. Thank you.